Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, October 23rd, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter5. And as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hello. And our guest today is D. John Richards, all the way from across the pond in England. Welcome. How the devil are you? Hmm. Doing well. Thank you. <laughs> Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And today, scientism. <laughs> and if you think you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. In Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, and we'll tell you more about them after the mid-show break. Well, Matt, you want to get into our topic for today? I do, but I did want to touch on something that happened to me last night. I was watching a, a fighting event, UFC 280, and I'm no, and it took place in Abu Dhabi, and they have a lot of different fighters from all around the world fight in a, a cage, and, and, they, and, they, and they go through combat. When they're done, they do an interview with the person, and it turned out, this is strange enough, every single winner wanted to thank God for their performance. Uh -huh. And I was just like, what a bizarre thing that we don't allow fighters to take like uh, uh, certain supplementals or like testosterone, but we allow them to use God as a way to enhance their performance. Can we please ban God as a performance enhancing drug? <laughs> that's really unfortunate. And if anything, God should just let us know which one he picked ahead of time. So that way the other person doesn't have to get beaten up. Yeah, yeah, because it seems to be 100 percent of the time. So cool. Well, the, the yeah. other thing, the other aspect of this is that presumably the losers also invoked the assistance of God. So he's obviously only successful 50 percent of the time. Now, here's my thing. I thought about that. I thought about that long and hard. I was thinking to myself, maybe God just didn't like that person was lying. And if God was just more straight up about what who his favorites were, that would help the betting lines. It would help. People not have to go through needless harm again, be up. Yes. Just be like, oh, God chose this person, not you. Fantastic. Yeah. We already know who's going to win. You're done. You're done. Yeah, but why don't the losers blame God for yes. not winning? <laughs> I mean, if, if he gets credit, he could also get the blame. And there's another can of worms as well, because if God has favorites, yes. What's his criteria? God How, is he a racist? Is he homophobic? How's he picking <laughs> these people? Yeah. If there's one thing we know about God, is he loves to pick and choose. God's love to pick and choose. I'm just saying, just make that public. That way someone doesn't have to get beaten up. Because I can't beat a person if someone's using God and I only have push-ups yeah. and fish plays, you know? Yeah. Like, I need more stuff on my side. What do you think, Larry? Yeah, true. And it's I saw a meme the other day. It was kind of funny. It says it showed uh, some Hasidic Jews uh, in yeah. their traditional dress. And it says... These are God's favorite people, according to the book they wrote. <laughs> right, 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 right. Good one. Good course, one. Yeah. Course, according to the book the Mormons wrote. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. God's uh, favorite people. Yeah. Or uh, the Hindus or whatever. Yes. It, it was a weird thing because there were both Christians and Muslims at this event in Dubai, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. it was weird when the the uh, Islamic winners were like, ah, uh, like they were saying uh, in their language, I love God, God's good, great, and everyone's cheering. And then when a Christian wins, and I did this through the blood of Jesus Christ, and everyone's <laughs> booing. And I'm like, what in the world's <laughs> going on? Just like at least consistently pick the God that's in the area. At least that way everyone can have a good time. That's all I was mm -hmm. saying. Got to yeah. work on the favoritism a little bit. Just make it more clear. Yeah, God John... is so generic. You know, the word <laughs> God, I mean, everybody claims it. That's yeah, where yeah. it's on our money, I'm sure. <laughs> job description not a identity we have to remember that. all right john rich is just like to check in with you before we dive into it how you been yeah i've been fine thank you very much i've been doing my usual nefarious deeds Ooh, we had, a, okay. we had a, an interesting it was just tercier and i again because our, our guest didn't turn up for free thought hour we don't know why so we're hoping that he's not fallen a victim of some nef nasty incident but 
Anyway, if you need a new guest, let me know. I'd be happy to tap in. Or if you need someone to just, if the hours work out right, just let me know. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Mm -hmm. Um, Very kind. We shall definitely do that. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, shoot me a um, reminder too. I should be able to drop in depending on the time, of course. Great, excellent. Yeah. Uh The problem with having a cat is you just wake up with a bed full of cat toys. (laughs) We try to schedule. We try to schedule guests throughout the calendar. And mm. so we, we have a, our vacancies start in November, I think now. But yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll definitely put you on the list. Great, thanks guys. Cool. So, so what right. else have I done? Um, I've been preparing to go on holiday because I am taking three female children to France tomorrow. Very fancy, wow, yeah. wow, wow. Yeah, so is it as impressive nice. in England when you say we're going to France as it is in America? Because when you say that in America, it's just like, whoa, you guys are going to Mars, basically. But for yeah, you, it's yeah. just a hop, skip, and a jump across it the, is, the yeah. lake. It's a, it it's a drive nowadays. I mean, it is. The tunnel. It? Yes, that's right. 35 minutes through the tunnel. 35 Carl, minutes right? through the tunnel. Mm, wow. Yeah. Beautiful, though. Okay. Well, that's great. Mm. Um, Larry, checking in with you. How you been? Oh, oh speaking of which, fun. Yeah. one quick thing. In sign language, holiday, because Larry's wearing suspenders, uh, going on vacation is doing this. Oh, for so like, uh, it, or uh, So like, I think the idea is if you're a farmer, you're on outside and you're oh, just like yeah. snapping your suspenders. I think yeah. that's the rule for it. <laughs> mm, well, How strange. The that's etymology good. behind it is weird. Let me, I'm going to have to look it up. Larry, how you been? <laughs> no, doing fine, doing fine. Playing my computer games and working every day. I did take the bike out yesterday for the final ride of the year. Um, I say that because all summer long, I kept it parked outside with a cover over it. And But during the winter, I put it in, in the garage, and I put it in yesterday. So I don't guess uh, I'll be getting okay. it back out until next year. Okay, not bad. All right, looked it up real quick. It is this. But the problem is, is like you're snapping your suspenders as if you're a farmer taking a break. So you're not oh. working. You're just like standing up, just like, you know, chilling. That's what the word vocation, vacation can yeah, be. By that the way, it's cool. a different thing in uh, British Sign Language. It so, will be. Yeah. I was going to say that yeah. is so American Sign Language. <laughs> and this this makes such good radio. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Very true. Very true. We, we're not anyway. Only- we're not only Go not ahead. a farming community, basically, but we also don't have what you call suspenders. We have braces, and they're out of fashion. So, oh my god! So yeah, you know, I've been looking for a good sign language podcast. Haven't found one yet. So you know, there's a good one out there. Hopefully, we'll we'll find it. But on radio, it's kind of rough, guys. <laughs> I've been talking about um, scientism all week with uh, our friends over on Reddit. Uh, who have listened to last week's shows and let us some really great comments and thoughtful ideas about the idea of people worshiping science. Mm. And I thought, well, what do you even mean by that? And it turned out to be this whole, you know, uh, uh, mound of hill. Worms. Yeah. Of pejor- yeah, can of, can of worms, of pejorative terms that Christians use against people who, who yeah. argue science. Yeah. Or people who think that science is the absolute best way to understand the universe, exclusion to any other point of view. And I'm like, well, this is a lot to think about. I'd love to have, you know, some of these ideas mold around by you guys. And I think we're a better place to start with than what are the different usages of scientism and how do you guys use those terms? Mm-hmm. Uh, Larry, we'll throw it up to you first. What do you think of the word scientism? Don't you dare pull up Webster's Dictionary. Oh, no. Uh, scientism. I, I think it, well, it's a prerogative, a prerogative, prerogatory word. It's a, it's a it's demean, demeaning word. Yes. <clears throat> In other words, they're, they're trying to throw the onus on scientists and people who believe yes. that scientists reveal truth about the world. And, uh, you know, it's just trying, it's kind of a curse word that they use against us. And, uh, of course, there are, there's not in the dictionary and it's not a, um, a real word it's just something they made up so that they could kind of put it could put us down with it well that's how it's come to mean yes originally yeah i'm i'm aware of the word in the dictionary but not in the use that you are using it because i agree scientism that is in the dictionary is an insult it scientism is. is a word in the dictionary yeah, yeah, yeah. and oh, it's also okay. i stand corrected it's also, it's also an insult that people throw out at each other and yeah, yeah. i don't know if that mm-hmm. usage is in the dictionary yeah. But it, I'm aware of that in pop culture where people will be like, oh, well, you're you're claiming that I'm wrong because I believe in the Bible, but you just believe in whatever Einstein wrote in his book 
of what Darwin wrote in his book. You're just a scientist. And we're yeah. both using faith. You don't you see we're both mm -hmm. using the same thing? What makes your yeah. system better than mine? Yeah. yeah. Uh, John Richards, what do you think? Well, the trouble is here, people have taken a word which was uh, coined fairly innocently. Right. Just, just to mean, and I have got a dictionary definition in front of me here. Okay. The, 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 the opinion that science and the scientific method are the best or the only way to render truth about the world and reality. Now, I don't entirely agree with that, but mm, same. that is the gist of how the word came about. That's what people originally meant it to mean. And of course, what's happened since then is it's been bowderized, it's been manipulated by people with an agenda who want mm -hmm. to use it to propagandize yeah. their, mm -hmm. their mission. And, and uh, as as Larry said, it's become it's become to, to be used pejoratively. And so it, it's now taken the assumption is by these people who aim it, target science, scientists with this word. They're, they're claiming that these scientists are claiming to know everything, which no no real scientist would claim to know. Right. I do they're have only, a. Oh, go ahead, Larry. I was just going to say they wouldn't even claim to know anything outside of their speciality. Mm. Right. Right. You know. Um, so I have an issue. Yeah, ahead. I have an issue. I have an issue with both terms. Obviously, we can go into the pejorative in more detail, but at least from the strict term of scientism is the belief in a general sense, going off the top of my head, that um, all things in the universe can be empirically tested and that through empirical testing, we can come up with the best way to derive actionable certainty. So like when it comes to determining what we're gonna do next, the scientific method is the best way or empirical testing is the best way to do that test. What do you think, John Richards? Well, yeah, I got a couple of things to respond to with that. First of all, currently, mm. not everything can be measured. Right. So, so a lot of things are outside the purview of science right now. Right. However, science continually extends its boundaries as, yes. as new technologies are invented to investigate new phenomena. Right. Like, you know, when microscopes were invented, up until then, we didn't know there was a microscopic world. Mm. But following microscopes we did we found out how that. terrifying was that for the first guy to be like ew yes, they're yes. everywhere they're yes, everywhere indeed. germs are everywhere oh that's terrible yeah. imagine yeah. that absolutely <laughs> don't drink that pond water <laughs> so, so we've been doing that for hundreds of years and of course the most recent one was ligo the, the technology which enabled us to detect gravity waves for the first time which was uh it was successfully right. detected gravity waves. I think mm -hmm. it was in 2017. So we're, we're continually pushing the boundaries of science outwards and being able to apply it to areas where it couldn't previously be applied. Mm -hmm. So, but at the moment, it would be a, a foolish thing to do to claim that we can use scientific method to apply to everything because, you know, somebody's going to come up and say, love you can't apply it to love well you know you, we're, we're well, working on it you know well hardly if you can define the variable well enough then yeah i believe to an extent we can be measured i also say this science has this very useful thing in fact in my opinion the most useful thing in science and it's you might have seen it in math like und or undefined mm -hmm. or i don't know or, or just plain yet. X. <laughs> yes, or unknown variables. Science yeah. has explicit unknown variables, which mm -hmm. means we can't come to determine yet, to determination yet, because we don't have the mechanics or the mm -hmm. criteria to properly yeah. figure out what this thing is. Yeah. Science has room for that. There's room for I don't know in science. Yes. And I find that to be the most useful impact yeah. in any sort of method because you're not forcing yourself to a conclusion that could be wrong. You're admitting when you don't know something. And science yeah. has that. And so when I say there's room for application and science and everything, I mean, even in the areas where it's, I don't know, that is the scientific indication of pursuit because you're not making any claims of knowledge. You're mm. at least recognizing I have room to grow here mm. and science does grow. And I find like that's such a great mm. intellectually honest way of going about trying to figure out how everything in the universe mm. operates. Mm. Not only that, but even the measurements that we can make, they have probability bars don't they where you can yeah they do they get that little plus this range thing. somewhere yes 
Yeah. So when I say, at least when I say, I feel like science could be used for anything in the universe. Obviously, things that aren't things wouldn't be applicable in that statement. So like gods, ghosts, souls, we can't apply science to that, but it'd still be one big, I don't know. But also with the caveat of being, please at least determine that this is a thing that's worth investigating first before we actually spend any time doing it. Because right now there's no evidence for it, just like unicorns or pixie dust and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so this. Oh, go ahead, John. Good scientists wouldn't claim to know everything or even right. to know to know anything with absolute accuracy. Correct. Uh, however, uh, what people who accuse us of scientism want us to do is mm. to do that, is to claim that, you know, we can solve everything. But the thing is, what alternative method do they have? They're... Know? There's the crux that I have a problem mm -hmm. with. That's the crux. That's the crux. Because it's a, it's a, it is an argument that sounds very tantalizing to me. But it's also, so like the idea is you have to exclude all other points of view except for science because there's no other method that has been equally as good as science, right? right. And, and if, if there is something better out there, please present it to me because I don't see yeah. it. Yes. But isn't that bordering along the lines of a black swan fallacy where it's right. like, I've never seen a black swan. I'm only seeing white swans. If you're saying there's a black one, present it to me. Otherwise, there's only white swans. It's like, just because we can't demonstrate to you in this moment the better method doesn't mean that there couldn't necessarily be one out there. No, what I like about that. science is that it is willing to adapt to the best method. Science isn't necessarily its own codified thing. It's just the best method and process that we can use to understand the universe. Yeah. If a better method is presented to us, that becomes our new science. Yes. That's, that's exactly. the way how I see it in my head. Yeah. Uh, Larry, what do you think? Yeah, it's like those people who say you can't trust your senses. You know, they're, they're trying to make a point or something. Yeah, but I saw them. Well, you can't trust your senses. Uh, what else are we supposed to use? You know, <laughs> that's, that's it. Right. You know, our, right. We yeah. have a we have a hard limitation on uh -huh. like our five sentences, our five senses and how we, or our many senses, senses mm -hmm. and Sense how we of, interpret mm -hmm. the universe with our own cognitive biases and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. But if we can find a way to subvert that, maybe. And like a robot showed us like, hey, this is how we can do it without limitations of smell, sight, understanding, childhood trauma, all this stuff. Just, this computer is the best way of doing it. Or like these aliens who have like this better technology who came down and showed us what's up. That will become our new science. Yes. So we'd still be using but, science. Our science would evolve. But it's not necessarily the idea that the science that we have now is the end all be all best method possible. It's just this evolutionary process. Larry, what do you think? Well, we do have science that, that will develop uh, technology to extend our senses. I mean, we can now see things in infrared. Uh, we can hear things Correct. in ultrasound, you know, all of that stuff. But it still comes down to our senses reading the readout of those right. instruments. I right. mean, we still have to depend on those senses. Right. Uh, like, for example, we have this device in our lab called a scanning electron microscope. Mm -hmm. It sees things that are too small for you to see with light because light doesn't travel in a straight line. Light travels in waves. And those waves are so big that things that are right. smaller than the wavelength of light yeah. can't really be seen very well. Yeah. So we have to use electricity to, to zap it because electricity moves through space more or less in a straight line. Mm -hmm. And it hits our sample. And what the SEM does is convert an electrical signal into a visual signal that we can, mm -hmm. that we can appreciate. All the SEM is, the microscope that we have, is a electricity to light translator, just so that we can appreciate what we're looking at. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's still our eyes looking at it. And who knows right. what, what small you know defects come about from that translation process. But it is a way for us to see things that we can't necessarily see with our eyes. We are extending our capability of seeing things through technology. And you know, I can't imagine that what we have right now is going to be the best method a thousand years from now. Yeah. Like yeah. a thousand right. years from now, we're going to have something mm. substantially better. That's still going to be our science. Mm. Thankfully, that's yeah. still science. That's still, mm. that's just the progression of what we've developed. Yes. And I want us just to recognize that, yeah, we may not be able to find a better version of science right now, but we're making a better version every day. Yes. And so if you gave us tomorrow or next week, we're going to have something better than when we had last week mm. ago. So if you, when we say, Hey, Show me a better method than science. It's like science isn't a thing that's stationary. No. It's not a snapshot. No. It's a process, right? Yeah. We got to remember that. Constantly moving, constantly improving. Yes. Which makes it better well. than dogma because right. it's always willing to change and recognize when it doesn't know something. That's what I value so much about it. Yeah. John, yeah. do you have any points? 
Yeah, well, uh, something that's moving but never gets anywhere is my, uh, my boat here, <laughs> my, my background. But I wanted to say that the important thing to get here is that mm -hmm. it's, it's not about knowing everything. It's right. about discovering. It's the best Ooh. method for investigating that we yeah, have at the true. moment. Yeah. And as you say, tomorrow we'll have a better method. Like the up until 2017, we didn't have the, the LIGO interferometers, so we couldn't Correct. detect gravity waves, but now we can. Correct. Yes. So now let's get into the more, I think, hot topic, which is we've discussed scientism in the, the empirical sense. We understand what science is. What do Christians mean when they call us scientists or scientism, scientism? And uh, we can't speak for Christians, but we at least have you know, comments from Christianity, blog posts, where they equate their religious points of views with how atheism uh, appeals to experts in science. And yeah. they say, you know, this guy isn't a biologist, yet he'll believe what a, a, a supposed authority in biology claims what happened to human beings, you know, what they claim billions and billions of years ago. And in my head, I get little red flags where it's like, you know, it's not so much that we're believing it just based on because someone said it. It's that there's a substantial degree of evidence to support it to the point where every step of the way of that evidence is a fairly mundane claim to where it's a much less extraordinary claim to, to interpret all of this than a God did it which is still a substantiated and a very extraordinary claim that needs more than a book for me to, to believe that it's true. Oh. My problem generally with the, the pejorative sense of scientism is that it tries to equate baseless faith with um, evidential pursuits of research. And I find that to be a very dangerous equivocation. Yeah, John, well, do you have an opinion? Yeah, what you're talking about there is the appeal to authority fallacy. Mm. which which christians and other theists are very prone to do they they love a, a big powerful know-all in and they have subsidiary know-alls in their hierarchy who represent are you saying god's just a big know-it-all like <laughs> <laughs> yes i am according oh, to wow. them <laughs> okay but, but but what we have what we if you look at a science book is mm. written very differently from mm. the way a bible or other scripture is written they're all about stories right there's no story in a science book it's boring stuff it's about th this these were the ingredients that we used in the proper the you know the what we started out with this is the method that we applied and right, this is right. what we observed and it's it's very dry reading it's not a page turner mm. so no. and the point about that is Anybody, it's like following a recipe to cook a pie. You know, anybody with access to the correct equipment could repeat that claim and right. get the answer for themselves. Right. It's not about appealing to an authority. It's about the potential ability to repeat it yourself. It's also falsifiable in the sense that if I don't get the same result you do, yeah, I can yeah. contact the author and be like, yeah. This yeah. doesn't work. You need yes. to revise something because I did everything exactly as you said. Yes. And if enough yes. people say that, then yes. has to, something needs to change. Exactly. You can't do that with the Bible. Every single time I don't get a prayer answered, I can't. Well, you're, not like, you're, you're not allowed. You're not allowed to. About this. You're not allowed to <laughs> criticize or, or complain about the Bible's claims. But the thing about science is we love to be criticized and to find mm. fallacies in our thinking because that's how we progress. Right. Larry? Yeah. Um, no. Even today, if you if you talk to a believer, uh, you you won't be very long before they bring up an anecdote about somebody in the church or the next church over or in the next state who had a miracle performed on them in church, mm -hmm. and everybody saw it. It's an anecdote, and yeah. they rely so much on these anecdotes that just mm -hmm. go around be between the the parishioners. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's obvious to anybody outside, but not inside, because basically right. the Bible is a book of anecdotes yes. that you're supposed to take on base value. Yes. So here's the scary thing is for some of the people, uh, a, a significant in my head, a significant percentage, it is just as obvious to them that it's just a book of claims. But in order for them to rationalize the time that they're spending staying in the church and avoiding all the backlash that will come from them leaving their faith, they have to say, well, I guess this is okay to, to come to the conclusion that a God exists. And I guess this is a good method for figuring out that things are true. 
a book where people just say that it happened. And when I mm-hmm. look outside at science, I see them looking at books where they there are people who are claiming things happen. So that just must be the way that, you know, that's a, a good way to determine things are true. And the problem is, is that's a very dangerous mindset because then they read the news and they're like, a billion people said that this country should be bombed. They're like, well, I guess that's true because, you know, that's what my news is saying. That's what my president's saying. That's what my local friend group is saying. I'm just going to go going with the flow. What do you think? Larry? Yeah, but they don't take it one step further that every religion has their own holy book, okay. you know, and they contradict each other. They can't all be right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but they'll vote on stuff like that too. That's why this yeah. is a problem because, you know, we're in midterm elections right now. Stuff like your beliefs matter because they inform your actions. Mm-hmm. And so when it comes to like actionable certainty, I prefer empiricism rather than spiritual claims. And when people want to call me a scientism, scientist or say I'm using scientism for that, let them because I also think gravity is a thing. Does that make me a gravitism as well? You know, like we have to be able to draw the line somewhere. And I find like what we understand science to be, it's a very useful method for determining true things from false things. Well, Larry, we're near the end of the bottom of the half. We are. going to listen to comments after the break. Well, sure. Be sure to stay tuned for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour here on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's talk for just a moment about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002, and we're in our 20th year. We have over 1,000 members now, creeping up on 1,100. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening at Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria, which starts around 530. Look for us inside at the high top tables or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. Also, we have Tuesday evening Zoom meetings on Ask. If you'd like to join us, email us for details at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com. You can find us online on Facebook, meetup.com, or at our website, knoxvilleatheist.org, or you can just Google Knoxville Atheist if it's easier to remember. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. Right. Oh, no. Oh, I'm about, where do you want to oh, pick up? Oh, no. I Uh-oh. looked up how to say holiday in British sign language, and it is the most offensive thing I've ever seen. Oh, no. I can do this because it's radio, and I'm not making this up, but the sign for holiday or they don't say vacation in British Sign Language. It's called exclusively holiday. It's this. Oh, my God. <laughs> no. I know. I and saw we that. can't I'm repeat like, that on, I can't even talk about it We can't repeat that on radio. radio, but that's exactly what that is. How bizarre. Uh, wow, it's, what, a, it's what a beautiful language. The double the finger. finger. The double finger. The double finger. finger. Great. Yeah. Anyway, guys, we are talking about scientism today, and we're going over some listener comments. Feel free to leave more in the YouTube channel um, or post when we open up the chat room in, on Reddit. We'll be happy to take them. We're going to go through some comments that we've selected before the show. First, we'll just do a recap of the first half uh, because SpaghettiO asked, what is scientism? And John Richards, would you mind giving us a quick uh, recap on what scientism is? Well, sure. The, the first original meaning is that it's the, the pro- proposition, the concept that scientific method is the best or only way to discover the truth about the world and reality. And I, I subscribe to that, but I, that doesn't mean that I could claim that it does, that it's finished, you know, that it has already discovered everything. But when theists use it pejoratively, what they are claiming is that scientists and people who believe that science is that best investigative tool are claiming that they've solved all the mysteries Mm -hmm. and that isn't the case no right larry anything to add no there's still be mysteries no matter what uh you were saying a little earlier that we can't investigate uh things like um, souls and we could if we had an example but in mm. 2,000, 3,000 years, nobody has ever supplied us with an example to examine. Yeah, Not yeah. even the ghost hunters. 
<laughs> and they're, <laughs> they're professionals. In their 20th season. They're in their That's 20th right. season. If it's so not, the whole give, thing it, is, give us a sample and science will take off. If right. It's not, the, I, go, if it's not ghost hunters, who are you going to call? That's right. right. <laughs> My whole thing is when you can demonstrate that it's worth pursuit, then we will begin the pursuit. But until then, we live in a world where we have a limited amount of time, right? And pixie dust, unicorns, souls, mm. ghosts, the kraken, all these things need to be demonstrated that there's an option for them yeah. to exist first before we even yeah. begin to an analyze it. Because when I do research, it's not from uh, the idea of like, well, I'll just Google it and, and determine if it's right or wrong there. No, it's like, we're going to actually spend money on this. Like, we're going to actually try to figure this out. We're going to take man hours. We're going to investigate it. Let's make sure it's worth our time. Yeah. And until you can demonstrate that it is, you know, at least potentially worth our time, don't yeah. waste our time, basically. Yeah. John Richards, what do you think? Well, if, if we look at the alternatives to scientific method that we've experienced in the past, they include a crystal ball, you know, palmistry, uh, reading the tea leaves. Horoscopes. <laughs> yes, they're just Astrology. laughable. So at the moment, science is the winner. And, and willing to adapt and change as needed. That's yes. the most powerful tool behind it. It absorbs good ideas and gets rid of bad ones. That's why science mm -hmm. is so great. Yeah. Uh, uh, Larry, I'm going to throw this one out at you. This is a comment from formerly committed. Scientism, evolutionists, Darwinists. You know, it's all noise used to generate or used to try to bastardize people from the rest of society to make it easier to attack them. Yes. Should people who believe in mm -hmm. gravity be called gravitists mm -hmm. or Newtonists? What do you think? Yes. Or electricianists. Yes. Electricianists. Uh, right. It's all a way of demonizing the other, mm. uh, as religion is so famous mm. for doing. Uh, they've mm. separated people into individual groups for yes. centuries, millennia, uh, yes. saying, we've got the truth, you don't. And therefore, right. you know, we, so we don't have to pay attention to what you're saying or what you do. Right. Yes. We shouldn't Excuse accept no. hateful oh. labels, should we? We it, should not accept hateful labels, though so we are so good at making them, yeah. you know? <laughs> as if, anybody's, if anybody's going to label me, I want it to be me. Okay. I actually know a guy named me at our lab, and it's very... It's uh -huh. I, know a, I know a guy named you, I know a guy named me, and I know a guy named her. But so it's just a very, very... Well, it's a very, very uh, interesting lab space that we're in. Uh, let's see. Schizmo also concurs. He says... Just another label we don't need, scientism. Thank you, but no thanks. Uh, Larry, I'm going to throw this one out at you. Oh, wait, actually, John Richards, this is for you. This is on evolutionary creationism. So, and this is by Text Bliss. She oh. writes, oh. so how could one affirm evolutionary creation while at the same time try to claim or embrace the historical Christian faith? It's like understanding that all the toys under the tree are at Christmas are from your parents. Reindeers can't fly and elves don't work at all in the North Pole but still believing that Santa is real. What's yes. that cognitive dissonance all about? Yes, well, it, it's a desperate attempt to justify belief in creation, isn't it? Because what they're saying is that evolution is true, but it was actually kickstarted by our God. And there's no evidence for that. That's just, we call that wishful thinkianity. W whoa, say that one more time. Wishful thinkianity. I love it. Wishful thinking anity. Okay, cool. I'm going to keep that in mind. Go on, Ed Larry. You're muted. Oh, I thought my audio went out. I was scared for a second. Oh, uh, and it's also a way of putting God in the gaps. You know, we don't have a particular explanation for a phenomenon, you know, so we'll shoehorn God in there. Yes. Uh, and <clears throat> uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson says, if that's your philosophy, then your your God is an ever receding gap in human knowledge. Mm. You know, so have fun. Yeah, as I we discover stuff, so he retreats. Uh -huh. Right. Mm. I couldn't think of a more pointed, you know, indictment against a being than the more you understand the world, the smaller they become. You know, right. like right. what does that say about the religion in the whole? Uh -huh. All right. So I have a heavy topic right here. Uh, this is from a commentator from last week, and she mentioned uh, that she wanted to stay anonymous this week. And she says, thanks for taking this topic from last week's discussion. I'll add a disclaimer that I am an atheist, happily so, and a researcher. Science, scientism to me is real and defined as people taking scientific claims as fact or faith without applying the same degree of skepticism that generated the claim in the first place. 
Quality research produces reports that are accessible to anyone, including folks who just sit and skim information online from their armchairs. However, armchair research isn't the same as the process that generated the data in the first place. Yet people can just as easily identify and fight on reports as if they internalize them despite lacking credentials, practice, experience, or authority on the subject. Just like dogmatic people can read a verse from their holy book and assume that they're experts on morality and wisdom. I understand that this reckoning will be difficult to swallow and may even hurt a lot of people's feelings, but honestly, there's a reason scientists are hired from academia and not Craigslist. It's annoying to see niche areas of science get popularized by people who don't understand it because then it just mystifies what science is. To avoid a longer rant, religion isn't annoying because it's religion. It's annoying because it causes people to turn off their skeptical mindset. When science is used in the same way, it can be just as annoying and dangerous. Even the most scientific claim from the most confident person is not an excuse to stop being skeptical. Absolutely. Right. I Question agree everything. So much. Right. Yeah. Wow. I'm glad that that was accepted well. I'm, I, I, I generally believe like everything that was said, and I think there was a longer discussion in the chat thread on the idea of, well, well is that thing actually scientism or not? And it's like, not, whether it is or not. That... In, a, in a nutshell, what that person was saying, and thank you for phoning it in, the was that dogmatism is universally bad you know we should right. nobody scientist mm-hmm. theist atheist whatever nobody should be dogmatic we should mm-hmm. all, if you if you watch scientists being interviewed they're always very careful about their expression they don't claim that anything is perfectly correct they say the evidence indicates correct and that's why i don't have a really much of a problem with deism uh, they don't have any dogma. You yeah. know, they say God created the universe, but it's not a God we ever heard of. We don't have any idea what's in his mind or her mind or its mind. Uh, we can't tell you what he, it, or she wants you to do. There's no book. You know, yeah. deism yeah. to me is harmless. But, uh, yeah. you know, there are atheists that don't want to stop there, don't want to yeah. allow that to, to happen and yeah. continue berating a person who believes in deism. And I, I don't know. I don't. I don't go along with that. If every religious person was a deist, yeah, a lot of things would be I wouldn't have, dramatically I wouldn't, better. Probably wouldn't, wouldn't be on the radio. Yeah. You know. <laughs> to me, it would be like, my job is done and he'd fly into that's the sunset. Right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> to, to me, deism is mother nature, and I can accept that. Mm-hmm. Right. Except, uh, again, deism seemed to, like any god, would think that it has a purpose or um um, what a mind, uh, a, right. a will per se, mm. and I don't think nature does. No. So no. I've had an analogy brought to me before that I always like going back to, but it's sort of like if you're on an island that has worms underneath a banana tree, and you only eat the worms under the banana tree because you don't want to climb up to get to the bananas because that takes effort, and so you're just spending your day just eating worms, gross worms from the dirt, when there are bananas right above you. If you just were willing to climb up high enough to get them, um, that's how I kind of see deism. It's sort of like you're right there. You you don't have any of the baggage of dogma, but you're still using this weird methodology to believe in a supernatural being, even if it is dead and it's not affecting your life. You still have this hang up. If you just took one extra step, you'd be able to at least be in a position where you don't have, where you have a better methodology of appreciating true things and false things. Because if you're still convinced that a god is ex- that was was real, but is just dead that that's still bad because you don't have any evidence to support that or any rational right. <clears throat> rational basis to to yeah. be convinced that that's true. speaking of evidence it really gets me when uh you know believers question the evidence that science has presumed i mean presented like um carbon dating things like that uh you have all this mountains of evidence and they say well it's not real well, it's not true because blah 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 and it's almost like if you had good evidence, they would accept it, but they don't. And they don't demand any evidence from their own beliefs, their yeah. own religious teachings. You, you just have to take that on faith. Yeah, slight so, bias there. <laughs> a little bit. I got a comment from YouTube that I think would be useful. Please, guys, be nice to this person. All right. So this one is, oh, Ty, remember that story where you talk about the guy drowning and what God answered him according to your version, well, you are wrong about that. You see, the afterlife is the goal. 
It doesn't matter how one dies and gets to the live in eternity. Thus, God can not like or dislike any type of death because all ways of dying should satisfy the goal, which is getting to the afterlife. So if you guys don't understand the context behind this, I told a story where a guy was drowning and he asked for God to help him, but he ended up drowning anyway. And he goes to the pearly gates and he asks God, why God, didn't you help me? And God's like, I like drowning people, <laughs> but you read my book. I do it a lot. I love it. I love it. And so like, it's a twist on the idea of like the boat coming and then like a lifeguard coming and then a helicopter coming and the guy still drowns. And it's like, God's like, I give you the helicopter, the lifeguard and all this other stuff. But the idea is, is this commenter saying that any way you die is okay because that gets you to the afterlife. And that's the goal. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about so, that? So, so if the goal, if the goal is the afterlife, what is hmm. stopping our correspondent from suicide now? I said, be nice. I said, be nice. Didn't I prefer, didn't I start that? Anyway, uh, <coughs> Larry, what do you think? I don't know how to respond to that. Well, he's glorifying death in one vein and minimizing the harm of it or the badness of death in the other. Uh, <clears throat> remember for, uh, for the religious death is just a change of address. And, you know, it's, <clears throat> you know, it's almost like, why should we avoid it in type of ah. thing, type of mentality? Also, <clears throat> excuse me, what is, if they say the purpose of life is death, what is the purpose of life after death? Because once you're there, you've received your goal and you've got a, the eternity mm -hmm. to sit there with no purpose. Right, you right, know? right, right. So Dada's Trading Room has responded, and I'd love to get your feedback on this, on why people just don't suicide. He says, oh. If that would be the truth passed on to people, most people would likely choose to die instead of suffering on life on earth. After all, the quicker ones get their internal paradise faster, and that's better, right? So some justification for staying alive, even if in misery, had to be invented. One such justification is sin and the threat of internal torture in hell. And so yeah. that's if the reason If you kill yourself, it's sin. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so Suicide is a sin. So is he in favor of assisted dying for the terminally ill then? You know, I remember that argument being brought up for assisted suicide. People being like, you're condemning these souls to die. And people who are literally in pain for the rest of their short lifespans were like, please don't let this story, you know, completely delete my quality of life for my last, you know, couple of months. I like, I want to go as soon as I possibly can, please. Wow. It's, it's. It's depressing how this actually does affect people's lives. Yeah. I mean, we can have this like cordial conversation here, but there are people actually suffering as a result of the dogma yes. that people believe. Yes, we've it's gone true. to a dark place. Hmm. All right. Let's go into the next comment. Thank you, Dada's Trading Room, always for the comments. Next one, I'm going to throw out to Larry. Larry, full disclosure. Uh, oh, here's, here's three rules. Number one rule, and this is given to us by Grumpy Kong. Doing science is awesome. Number two rule, worshiping science is not. And number three, the tendency is not limited to the scientifically illiterate. It does nothing to forward the cause of scientific excellence to worship science. At best, it encourages fanboy behavior. At worst, it justifies charlatans. Sometimes those charlatans cost people their lives. Larry, what do you think? Well, he's just made a series of claims. I'm, <clears throat> I'm not sure there's a question in there to answer. Uh, I, I want your feedback. It doesn't have to be an answer. Just doing science is awesome. Worshiping science is not. And the tendency is not limited by the scientific literature. Well, I, like, you know, I agree with him on the worship. I, I don't think we yeah. should worship anything. Worshiping oh. is, is counterproductive. It, it, it sets your mind to not asking questions, not holding anything to accountability. Um, we shouldn't worship anything, not even science. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> who's who's uh, the, advocating worship? Not me. Not me. Yeah. And we're all saying uh, we shouldn't worship science, right? Yeah. No, uh, we just, we are convinced that it's the best approach to take to find out, find answers from nature. Right. All right. So I got another <laughs> one for you, John Richards. This is a comment that I'd like to get your feedback on. Um, it's written by, uh oh, Ibear. And Ibear says, scientism is essentially just another word for empiricism. It's just the belief that the scientific method is the correct way to understand the universe. That's the definition that you guys were talking about originally. That's what scientism actually is. But most of the time when you hear scientism, 
you're hearing a believer accusing a non-believer of worshiping science. Right. It's an attempt to <laughs> pretend like that, that the non-believer's position is equivalent to the believer's in foundation and support. And that's a yeah. lie. Um, that's not scientism, not by the official definition or the more common pejorative meaning. You are talking about something else if you say otherwise, something that is not scientism. You need to understand that. What it's, do you think? It's, it's distorting definitions as a weapon to try and get your message across. Right. I agree. Uh, Gullibility <laughs> is not the same thing as scientism. Uh, what do you think, Larry? Well, <clears throat> one of the things you said earlier was uh, intriguing. I thought I'd address it. Uh, it says, uh, why do people just believe uh, science? They can't. Uh, the, we're talking about people who don't do the science. We just uh, listen to what the scientists say and believe them. And uh, generally, uh, that's the that's the concern of believers when they see us um, quote worshiping science, as it were. You know, you don't do the science, but you know, you you claim to know that evolution is true because of the right. science. Right. Well, you know, it says there's a meme here that I'm looking at. I can't give the credit to whoever wrote it because I don't know who it is. It says creation, evolution. Nobody really knows for sure how that stuff began, but I'd rather trust the dudes in the lamp coats who aren't demanding that I get up every early every Sunday and overdress and apologize for being human. <laughs> I mean, that there's a lot to that in that uh, religion makes an awful lot of demands on people. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it's true. Tith tithing, uh, you know, mm -hmm. going yeah. to church several times a week, yeah. you know, et they cetera, do. et cetera. They and, do want worshiping, yes. Right. And they threaten you. Science doesn't threaten you with eternal right. life, you know, right. eternal pain. Uh, it's, you know, they, they present the results. Their peers evaluate the results. And when they agree, they publish the papers and we have new science. Mm. Something we need to respect and recognize is that religion is marketing in its peak form, right? You have uh -huh. a product that no one can see, taste, smell, hear, but yet everyone has a personal experience with it. And you produce it by constantly making iconography that people have to, you know, put on their bodies, tattoo on their arms, chest, whatever. Your their kids are sent to schools that have the same marketing appeal. Uh, people are shunned if they don't have the same idea or the brand loyalty that you profess to have the, yourself. This whole strategy is just very targeted propaganda towards a particular product or a brand. Mm -hmm. And alternatively, science has a very good brand as well. Its brand association would be tied to credibility, smart people, authorities and fields that like seem to be technologically very useful and everyone loves technology and having new cool things. So what religion is trying to do oftentimes is pull the useful aspects of the science brand and, and accommodate it in its brand of dogma. And I find that to be you know, a scary thing because who can champion against that other than adherence for critical thinking and who's listening to us compared to like who's listening to religious people. But also it should be indicative. It should be indicative that science is doing a good thing on its own. It's not asking you for your tithing. It's not asking for your soul. It's not asking for your worship yet. The people who are, are trying to borrow as much as they can from it to get the credibility from it. That should be telling because science isn't doing the other way around. Science yeah. is like, you guys, I have nothing to want. I have nothing for your gods. I don't even want them. I'm just going to keep doing our own laboratory thing. And yeah. people are going to keep trying to pull credibility from us because we are, in my opinion, the most credible way to try to figure out true things from false things. Yeah, That's why you have religions called Scientology or why people try to lambast scientism because they're trying to denigrate science down a little bit and oh. propose their religion up just a little bit or at least put yeah. them on equal footing. Yeah. I don't know. I think we should hit back at that and coin a word, religiology. Ooh. <laughs> or religionist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because is that well, your religiology is telling you that? It, well, is your scientism telling you that? <laughs> <laughs> what, what they're trying to do is make claims that they can't justify, but they want us to adopt. Well, right. That's definitely like scientism with mm. you know, the ism a bit on the end an ideology of sorts, but it's without the foundation that science actually has. Right. I got a closing comment before we end up the show. Um, there is a very, very, speaking of cool technology, there is a website called Writer, R-Y-T-R, and it's an AI writer. And all you have to do is give it a prompt. And you say, 
make an article about why the uh, the why France's economy is two percent higher today than it was yesterday. You just put that as a sentence, and it will generate like a a one page report, three page report, whatever you want. That sounds like if it was written by a human being. Sounds like there's all the same tones in that because it's just oh. using algorithms to pull through AI, a very artificial article. intelligence, right? Yes. It. And it is terrifying because now I realize that a lot of the articles I'm reading are basically pulled by the same algorithm as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So two things I'm learning. <laughs> One, even for things that I, I respect the sources, I should be willing to be skeptical about them because yeah. I don't know what was produced or what was used to make the articles that I read, yeah. right? Or what the agenda was behind them. So even scientific articles I need to be you know, uh, skeptical against. Yeah. But also, if you prompt this AI robot to write an argument for the existence of God, it just flat out says, I don't have a belief in God. I'm sorry you have that problem. <laughs> so so what's, what's uh -huh. the name? What's the name of this AI? R Y T R writer, writer, writer. No, no, it's, uh... no, no. It's it's Deepak Chopra. Oh. oh okay. 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 I just I hope just... high school students don't get a hold of it. No, they'll I just never love how they'll it never just, like, turn in a um, I, a paper again that's their own i love ais that don't do our dirty work for us they're like nah that's not worth my time i'm not going to do that anyway we're near the end of the show john rich is anything that you like to plug before we head out yeah well um i've i've done a a a, a uk atheism uk podcast this morning that was um mm. very good i had esther our guest and we talked about um not my religion because there's a lot of people who begin to perceive that there's something wrong with their religion, but they don't mm. want to give up the entire thing. So they right. put it on the pick and mix counter and mm. select the bits they like and say that these are in my religion and these aren't. So they're, they're sorting it out, sort of watering it down, and they won't go that last step. Pick and mix. I've never heard that before. That's great. <laughs> That's like cherry picking what we say. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. I'll say I'll leave with this. Thank you guys so much for your comments. Feel free to leave more and we'll get to them in next week's show. Thank you, everybody. And Larry, I still don't know what religion is all about or atheism. You got to figure out a way. You to know, people it. write books on that. Oh, man. <laughs> you should I write happen, a book on it. I happen to have done that. Uh, you can go to uh, Amazon and find my book, Atheism, What's It All About? Um, and actually, you can go to my website, digitalfreethought.com, click on the blog button, and read many of the articles that are in that book. Uh, also, we have a radio show archive there, Atheist Songs, and many articles on the subject of atheism. That's digitalfreethought.com. If you have any questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org, or let's chat se at gmail.com, and we'll answer them on future shows. Remember, you can find the Atheist Society of Knoxville at knoxvilleatheist.org or just Google, Google Knoxville Atheists. And if you're having trouble re, re, leaving religious beliefs behind, you can get help at Recovering From Religion. Their website is, uh, rationally enough, recoveringfromreligion.org. Uh, you can find this show and podcasts everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. I don't believe they are. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Say bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> and good.